Hello, thanks for tuning in, welcome back. Um, today we're going to tie a pretty generic olive done pattern. Um, I'll be tying it in a size 14, so ideal for a large dark olive imitation. Um, pretty simple, pretty effective, uh, I'll show you how I do it. I'll be using deer hair, um, I just think it's a bit more durable and it just lasts longer. You can, you know, you can treat it and it'll float all day. Or, um, whereas CDC does have its advantages, uh, it's a bit more labour intensive to fish it all day. So, in the vise, size 14 dry, thread, olive, um, this is uh, nano silk, but any olive would do. So, just work a bit of thread on there. Trim away that tag end. Work your way down. And then you want to stop somewhere short of the bend, about there. And then we're going to tie a tail in. So for the tail, I'm going to use some um, fibres from this grizzly cock feather. I use this for a lot of my dry flies. Actually, I don't think the colour is important at all. So about there. Just catch it in, a couple of turns, lock it in, and just wrap it down. There you go. So that'll do for a tail. What I like to do just for a bit of added peace of mind is just bring one under the underneath. Now what you can do if you've if you've come a bit far down the shank, you can put a couple of those turns in just to bump up the um, the tail a bit if it's looking a bit dreary. So now we're just going to come in parallel with the shank, trim those ends away, and I'm just going to tidy this up a bit. What we want to do is try and keep the body quite uniform on this. You don't want to waste a load of wraps. So now you want to stop back at the uh, bottom there. I'm going to tie in our peacock quill. So a natural or an olive quill. Um, I'm using, I think this one's golden olive. I'm not sure if the camera will pick it up there. Um, what you might be able to see is it's very, very thin towards the top end here. And this is the good, the good quill with that dark side on it. Um, obviously it's going to be quite a short body on the fly because it's you know it's not a big fly so we can be quite ruthless and we can trim away a lot of this a lot of this thin stuff that we won't be using. So we'll trim that a little bit of an angle. And now if you can so your quill should have a dark side to it. You want the dark side facing the tail of the fly. It'll just make it look a bit more aesthetically pleasing when you wind it on. So then, just off of that tip in there, nice loose wrap over the top. And then once it's locked in, just work down a couple of wraps just to, just to get it in there. Depending on the quality of your quill, you might want to um, just run it through your lips or, you know, moisten it a little bit because um, they can be quite brittle. These quills are pretty good quality, so I should be okay. I should get away with it. So that's locked in. So now I'll just, I like to do it with hackle pliers, so I'll just catch the end in there. And then I'll wind it round. So just nice and easy. And you want a, just a slight overlap on every turn. And you can see already you start to get that nice segmented insect look. 
doesn't have to be precise if you see um, the naturals on the water if you get up close you'd be amazed how many of them have um, little deformities and what have you so once you get up there just lock that in place take those pliers off just put another wrap around there so that's nicely locked in So what a lot of people would do is just pull away that tag end, but it always makes me a bit nervous. So I like to trim it, and I'll just another quick wrap to tidy it up. Now, what I would usually do here is use um, a little bit of nail varnish, some Sally Hansen or something, just give that a really fine coat. Um, but for the purpose of the video I'll use a UV resin because um, obviously it's a bit quicker so I've just got this Gulf Thin Man that I'll use and it's just to protect that quill um, you know from the trout teeth so just put a tiny little bit on on there and then I'm going to use my dubbing needle Just to work it around, make sure I've got everything covered. Quick blast with the UV torch. Should be good. So, just even this head out a little bit. I'm going to come back down the body very slightly and we're going to tie our wing in. So, for that, I've already stacked some deer hair. What you want to do is you want to take it, take it out with the, the butt ends facing backwards just tidy it up a bit if you've got any bits of fluff or whatever just get rid of those again it's key to remember that neatly stacked deer hair is um, is something that we fuss over as fly tires the fish don't mind one bit So wing length, again it's up to you, where will you be fishing it, do you need that visibility, do you need it to float, do you need, you know, do you need a lot of deer hair. Um, I'm going to go about there, catch it in a big open loop, another one, and just tighten that down, a couple more tight wraps on. And then I'm just going to keep all of these buttons. Come in there and trim it as close as I can. And just tidy up that trim. And then I just want to gently lift this wing. Put a few turns in front. So that's that locked in place. So I'll just come back in and, and pick up any any little strands that I left behind. I'm going to go back over the top, pull that tight. If you just do a few either side, it just really locks it in place. So. What we've been able to do with tying the wing in last is we've been able to keep a nice slim body profile there and then also this little bunch of deer hair here creates a bit of mass um, which is ideal for imitating 
the main body, the thorax of the fly. So it's quite handy. Um, the last thing we want to do is just add a touch of dubbing just up at this thorax at the base of the wing. Um, just, you know, give the imitation of legs or different bits floating about on the surface. So I'm going to use some uh, Vicuna here, obviously. Um, I think we'll go for a medium olive. And we'll just work a little bit on. Into that. So then, first one's going to go around the back, one in front, another one around the back, and in front. I'm going to put a little touch more on that. With the um, with the crossover motion of going over the back and then over the front as well, it just makes it that, that bit stronger. There we go. So now I'm just going to come in with a half hitch tool, just square that away. So the final thing I want to do is just put a little dab of varnish on that thread before I whip finish. In fact I won't whip finish, I will half hitch it. So just work a bit of varnish on with an old W needle. And then you do a couple of half hitches and that will keep it all together. There we go. And that is pretty much done. You can leave it like that if you like. You might want to pick out some of the um, some of the fibres just to give it that that bit of movement, that extra buggy look. Um, but yeah, it's up to you. Um, and that's it done. Very effective. Um, it'll float all day. What I tend to do is rub a little bit of mucilage or gink into the the wing. Uh, and that that's enough to keep it floating. Um, so yeah, give it a go on your next LDO hatch, and uh, good luck with it. Thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you soon.